This is the Game of Life. Welcome to the Game of Life. This is your host, Gail Nelson, President and CEO of Big Brothers Big Sisters of Miami, Season 2, Episode number 2, 2019. And I have one of my favorite people on the show, caring, uh, just committed, passionate, but most importantly, the authority in the city of Miami Gardens Police Department, Chief Delma Noel Pratt. Welcome to the Game of Life. Hello, 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 Gail. So you've been busy this new year thus far? Always Hopefully busy. not too busy on the no, law no, enforcement no. side. No, no, no. Not too busy. Okay. okay. Busy enough. Busy enough. Busy enough. Well, let me just talk about this. I mean, we're going to talk about your, your role as a big sister. We're going to talk about just the impact you have to, with this organization. I can't thank you enough on behalf of all the kids we serve. But one of the things that's interesting is law enforcement. When did you first become acquainted with law enforcement, Chief? Well, approximately over 30 years ago. I don't want to talk about my 30 age. years ago? Wait yeah. a minute now. Yeah, I'm over about 30 years ago. I, I'm trying to do the math on that. That doesn't <laughs> resonate. <laughs> 30 years ago, talk to me. I started as a public service aide with the city of Miami okay. uh, Police Department, and that's when I get I got acclimated with law enforcement. I was able to go into the community, um, do things on the low end, but I really, really enjoyed it and, and decided to transition over to uh, being a police officer. Okay. Now, was, what was the motivation for going to law enforcement? Was it just, okay, let me try this out, or was there any family influence or any other influence that got you involved? Well, actually, uh, I always wanted to be an attorney. Okay. And I figured this would be the right avenue, the right road to uh, travel in order to obtain that. So, And I still have that aspiration, so maybe one day you'll see me uh, behind a bench somewhere. Yeah, hey, that's all right. <laughs> uh, case dismissed. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Let me say this to you. Now, in such a male-dominated industry, you know, law enforcement, when I think about it, did you face any any challenges at all as, you know, just a female in a male-dominated industry? I sure did um, because I'm— I have such a short stature. Um, a lot of individuals thought that I didn't have the physical ability, the mindset in order to become a police officer. Right. Um, so therefore, I had to make sure that I prepared myself. You know, I, I read a lot of books, made sure I trained really hard, and proved them wrong. You know, my my ability speaks for itself. I always had this passion, and and things like that really motivate me. So I always had that passion to go ahead and show them that. You know, anyone can do this job, uh, male, female, it doesn't really matter. As long as you have the passion, just like you said, and you have the integrity and the ability, anyone can, can be a police officer. What a powerful message. We're going to just pause, let that simmer for a bit, because as people listen to this game of life, we're on the Apple Podcast now. Yes. We're on Spotify. I'm just doing a little shout out right now. Yes. And this game of life mentoring podcast, what this is all about, Chief, is the fact that in life, you know, again, everybody makes the team, but how exactly. you play is up to you. Exactly. So when you think about, okay, see, my mother is about your height, and there was no shortage of authority. <laughs> my mother, let me say that again, and I shout out to my, my heart, Cubby is what I call my mom. Exactly. And it's, you know, you she just can just make it happen. Exactly. She told us what to do. She meant what she said. And you did it. And we did it. <laughs> and so it wasn't so much about the stature. It was about the respect. Uh, and for all the little girls out there listening, you can be anything you want to be. The little boys listening, uh, and you can be anything you want to be. And so I'm sure you were told, maybe either not only verbally, but even through some of the actions or inactions, that you don't belong here. Exactly. Every day. And that motivates me even more because that pushes me. No doubt. That makes me determined. As uh, long as I stay focused, I do the right thing. I know that anything is possible. And I will succeed. That's just my, my thing. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Chief Delma Noel Pratt. Yes, sir. You know, letting people know that it's, you know, you can be anything you want to be. You stick to it, that passion, that energy. And now when we now you met me, and I'm trying to think the first time we met one another, Chief. Uh obviously we our, our kids went to the same school yes. uh, at one point. You saw me out there coaching, doing my thing. How was that coaching? What did you think of it? That's a legendary coach out well, there. What, talk running, to me. You were running back and forth. I think you were out of breath at one point in time <laughs> and I had to say, oh, Who's that coach? We go. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you, you were doing a very good job. Uh and that's a form of mentorship too yes. that you were doing with the kids. My daughter actually was playing volleyball at the time that's and we right. figured we Go ahead and watch the basketball game, and I'm glad that we did because we've built a great partnership. So No doubt about it. Yes. And then I remember uh, when we connected the dots, 
we had gone out yes. to, and at that time you were with the Miami-Dade Police Department. Yes, sir. And you were a part of the leadership team, and we were talking about Big Brothers, Big Sisters, and you said, I know you, and we connected the dots. Exactly, we sure did. And one of the, uh, so it was inspirational, and certainly for me, and I know it was for you, when I went to your swearing-in ceremony as the first, let me say that again, <laughs> the first female police chief for the city of Miami Gardens. Yes. What did that mean to you? It means a lot. Uh, it means that I'm an inspiration. Um, it shows uh, other folks that they can, once again, do and be anything that they want to be. Uh, I don't take it very uh, lightly. You know, I'm a very humble individual, but uh, it just pushes me and, and just shows me that, you know, anything is possible. And so with that being said, I'm very proud that I have little girls looking up to me. That's right. I'm very proud that I have women coming up to me saying that, you know, I'm an inspiration to them. And uh, I'm just so proud to represent a great, great city, um, like City of Miami Gardens. Um, and, I, and like once again, I don't take it lightly at all. I'm very proud to lead the men and women of that organization. And as I, you know, every Sunday, every Wednesday, as I frequent the Miami Gardens Church of Christ often yes. and in service, uh, just to be in and out of the city of Miami Gardens, uh, what I see happening under your leadership is commendable. Thank so you. I say that as someone who uh, reaps the benefits of your leadership. So, I mean, it's it's a special thing. And I don't take all of that. Once again, it's the, the men and women that I, um, and I, you know, we work as a sure. team. And it's just a vision that I have that we continue to work together. We're, we're pretty much a family, and we get the job done. And so I just lead by example. And so how many chiefs were you under prior to your role as a chief? Two. Two. Two, yes. With, of course, Miami-Dade. Yes, with Miami-Dade and then um, with uh, the city of Miami. Okay. Two, yes. And so that, as we talk mentorship, this is a mentoring podcast, that experience. And so what's great about leadership is you look at other leaders and how they lead and some things you continue, some things you say, you know what, if I'm ever in that position, I will never do that. Right. Well, I <laughs> What are some say, lessons that you've learned from other chiefs or well, the leaders? Well, I would say you just take bits and pieces from individuals and you make it your own. Yes. Um, you don't want to go ahead and be a clone of anybody, um, but you do take uh, some of the positives and you learn from some of the negatives and you say, well, listen, you know, this is how they decided to lead. I'm going to lead this way. I'm going to use this. I'm going to use that. It's just like making a cake. You know, some things you want to add into it and some things you don't. And uh, so that's what I do, and, and I try to do it to the best of my ability. I like that. And not everything is packaged. Leadership is not a packaged deal. No, it's not a packaged deal. Like Grandmama deal. would say, you got to do something from scratch. Because every day is different. Every day that I go into the office, it, it could be one thing or another. Yes. And so I just look at everything, you know, like a clear glass and just make my decisions based on that. That's so, excellent. Yes. Bigs in blue. Big brothers, big sisters wants to, and we are nationally and locally. Shout out to our national CEO, Pam Iorio, who has certainly just embraced this Bigs and Blue concept, and it continues to expand. But Miami, we were one of the first. Exactly. And you are a big part of that, Chief. Thank the you. I remember sitting in that room with the other leaders when you were with another department, and we talked about matching kids with police officers to build the trust, to strengthen relationships, and now more than ever, we want kids to respect the authority, not just those in uniform, but respect authority in the classroom, at home, everywhere. Exactly. But you are a part of that. So when did you first become a big sister? Approximately eight years ago. Eight years ago. I had a rambunctious uh, third grader and uh, at a local school. And uh, just reading to her and just her reading to me and us doing math together, going in the playground together and just talking about life, she um, brought something to me that, you know, it, it, it was really, really special and uh, imparted a lot of good things in, in her. And I'm just so glad that I was able to, you know, afforded that opportunity to have that, you know, that chance to, to build that relationship with her. Um, as you know, I have three daughters of my own, and uh, it really, really allows me to even broaden the horizons within my own personal life mm. with my daughters. So, yeah, this is a very good program. And so you went to the school to see that third. Was that the Bigs in School, yes, school-based mentoring at that I, time? I sure did. That's I cool. sure did. I, I went to see her all the time, 
talk to her teacher, her counselor, just see how she was developing, and she was right. developing very, very well. Now, that was your first that, little sister. That was my first. Now, you've had two or last. is it three? I've had two since then. Two, okay. So, two since then. So now tell us about then what happened. What was your next relationship? Because I think that was a different program model, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Um, the next uh, young lady uh, was a high schooler at Northwestern yes. High School. Right. Um, great individual. Uh, you know, we were able to discuss about resumes and just, um, you know, uh, how she would, um, if she weren't wanted to go to an interview, how she should dress and just, you know, just things that I feel that young ladies should learn and Absolutely. should know about life. And uh, we developed a very good relationship to the point that um, I went to her prom and I remember seeing those pictures. I went to her graduation and now she's a freshman in, in college at Florida Memorial University. Shout out to shout Florida out to Memorial. the Lions, no you know. Doubt about, shout out to the Lions. Yeah, I'm very very proud of the young lady. Mm-hmm. And to this day, we still have a good relationship. You know, she knows she can text me, call me, and vice versa. I check up on her, and and we're doing very well. Yeah. And now, as the chief, yes, of the City of Miami Gardens Police Department, you have a little sister now. I do. And she attends. Shout out to the Chiefs, to Carroll Chiefs, City. Carroll City High School, senior She's high. She's a senior. Senior. At Carroll City High School, and I'm very proud of her, too. She's at the top of her class, mm. and and we discuss about, you know, her going off to college and just preparation for that and just talk about life in general because sometimes, you know, it's not always about, uh, you know, the schooling. Sometimes it's just about personal things that they want to discuss with you. And they can see that we're, you know, we're human beings. And we sometimes we have our own struggles, and we can discuss the struggles we have as adults and the struggles that they have as teenagers. And, you know, it's very nice to uh, to be a part of her life, too. I saw a video, <clears throat> and as I think about it, when you were first matched with your current little sister. Yes. And you looked at her and said, come on over here. And so to be matched with the chief of police, <laughs> I mean, that's that's a big deal. I know how humble you are. Yes. And you gave her a big hug. I, don't, I know you remember that day. Yes, I do. And you put her at your desk, if I'm not mistaken. I sure did. I told her she was chief of the day. My goodness. And can I come be your little brother for a day? <laughs> you sure can. You sure can. <laughs> <laughs> I do that with little kids, uh, by the way. You know, uh, I like to invite little kids to my office and allow them to see exactly what we do behind the scenes and, and how decisions are made. Um, it's very important for them to see that aspect also. Not just the aspect on the on the streets, but... The aspect behind the decisions that are made so uh, I always invite them in. Chief and when I saw that video uh, when we think about the kids who are being told sometimes at home unfortunately that they cannot. Exactly. You're just like your dad you're just like whoever if you will and it stunts their growth. So when I saw that video of your little sister yes. sitting behind the desk and it said chief of police Yes. I can only imagine what that did for that young lady's confidence. And the message to everybody listening to us today, we got Chief Delma Noel Pratt, Chief, City of Miami Gardens Police Department, and the message is we can build trust in our community. Our kids have tremendous potential, yes. and what you are doing as one person is impacting not only a city, and I know it's a team, but your leadership and commitment as a big sister is has not gone unnoticed Thank from you. our vantage point as big brothers, big sisters. Taking me back, I grew up in inner city Toledo, Ohio. Single mom raised two boys on her own. And in my high school yearbook, one of the things that was interesting, I was most likely, get this now, to be a DJ. Can you imagine that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and most, I did the sports announcements. And I, again, I remember the day I messed up my own name. I said, Gail Nielsen led the track team. And so I was so embarrassed. <laughs> but the bottom line is I was most likely to be a DJ or uh, a president. Okay. And so I'm thinking, okay, I'm doing a little bit of both right now, president, CEO, And here we are in the Boogie Live studio. And so now let me just give you a little context on family. Because mentoring is family. You've been a part of this mentoring family for over eight years now. We're in the Boogie Live studio. DJ Irie, shout out to Irie. In partnership with Irie Foundation, this Boogie Live studio was named after Irie's mom. Her nickname was Boogie. Wow. And so my point in mentioning all of that contextually is when we begin to invest in our kids, when we begin to live up to our potential, we leave a legacy. Think about a mom with a nickname Boogie, whose son becomes a DJ, yes. partners with big brothers, big sisters, and little brothers and little sisters can come in here and make beautiful music. Exactly. And then we got a chief comes in here, you know, <laughs> maybe small in stature, but you certainly bring the noise when it, as it relates to authority. And that is the message. Mentoring opens doors for everybody. Sure Let does. me say this to you, Chief. 
the current relationships or the current uh, you know, relationships, for lack of a better word, between local communities and the police department. What can we do better? And what are you doing and you and your team doing to make sure that it's healthy and positive? Number one thing is just listen to each other. Mm. Communication is key. That's what I always say. And if we just communicate with each other and listen to what each other has to say, anything is possible. We can go ahead and interact with each other, partner with each other, whether it just be sitting down at a table, fellowshipping with each other. Yes. Anything is possible. And it's amazing when you just talk, because in this age of social media, or somebody just texts, or it doesn't even spell out the whole word, just little, uh, you know, shortcuts, if you will. Yes. The art of communication. When you sit down and talk to somebody, forget what you've heard. I met Chief Pratt. Don't tell me that all police are bad. Exactly. Don't, don't, don't get into that. All people that sound this way look this way. It's about relationships. It's about building relationships. Yes. A lot of us, I always say, our mothers, fathers, sons, and daughters, we live, we breathe just like everybody else out there. Mm. And we just need to work together to get the job done. Once we do that, we will succeed. What's your message to those out there? One last question for you, Chief. When you think about those who are thinking about, you know, when people make resolutions in the new year, some just do it as a result. It's like an annual ceremony just going through the motions. I want to make more money, I want to be in a better relationship, I want to, and I want to get an education or lose weight, and this, and that, this, that, and the other. But we're talking about kids. We got a waiting list. Most of the kids on the waiting list look like you and me. And so for everybody listening, Chief, you've been a big sister for over eight years. Two young ladies, are, one's about to graduate, yes. one has already graduated, is at Florida Memorial, yes. and that third grader has continued to make progress. Yes. So you've impacted three lives, and that ripple effect continues as the gift that keeps on giving. What's your message, whether it's somebody in uniform or outside a uniform, in terms of mentoring? Keep believing. Keep giving back. It's about giving back. Reach down, get another person. That's what I'm doing, you know. It's always about reaching out for that other person because you never know how your words can impact someone. So just continue to talk to other people, talk to the young folks. Just try to encourage them and let them know that they can succeed and just tell them to believe and stay focused and and just grind and it will happen Look it will that. happen the game of life where everybody makes a team but how you play is up to you chief delma noel pratt yes sir a bigs and blue champion small in stature <laughs> always will be <laughs> <laughs> but doing what you need to do chief thank you for being with thank us thank you today. so much gail for thank having you for me what on. you are doing what you've done and what you're going to do as well you are an inspiration to big brothers big sisters and most importantly to our community as well thank you so much much sir. respect we're going to let aretha take us home thank you hey this is gail nelson president and ceo of big brothers big sisters miami the host of The Game of Life. 